Welcome to the LinkedIn Power Lab webinar. Today is Monday, the 19th of June. My name is Gunnar and I would like to get started with this episode, which is I think number 35 or 36 since I started uh, three years ago. And um, I started when it was every second week when it was new to have webinars. And in the meantime, I'm on the rhythm of about every second month. So there was one session earlier this year, which was in end of February. Uh, there I talked about artificial intelligence and LinkedIn, a particular chat GPT. Instead of April, I had a recorded session, which I need to put on, uh, which talks about the combination of LinkedIn and Twitter. And then I also had my book launch. And then in the meantime, we are here about the topic for today. So for those who don't know me, there's a couple of you who joined for the first time. So thank you for being here. I appreciate that. My name is Gunnar. I'm a social media consultant, actually as a side business in that sense. I'm blogging for 238 weeks in a row about the topic of social selling. Um, and I created two online courses by myself and I created one also within my former company, Hootsuite, and I published a couple of books, um, two dozen of them. So let's look into the topic for today, what I prepared. To begin the webinars, have one bigger topic distilled into three portions. So I called it from content to conversation. So I talk about content. We need to write to engage, not just to write. Then about the conversation that's happening. So we need to engage so that we can also convert it further. And then the conversion itself, we want to turn the topic that we started with our content into something. So um, when I take it from a target of social selling, it's not necessarily to sell online, but it's about to take a conversation offline. What happens in public to take that further into whatever that might be. Could be a one-on-one -on -one meeting, could be just a phone call, whatever it might be. And so much can come out of this and I have a couple of examples. What I would like to have, if you could utilize also the chat, so whatever, you would like to talk about, please feel free to do so. Uh, to add that we can um, capture some of the conversations happening, so that's good. And for each of these three topics, I will also have a question to you that we would like to answer inside the chat. So let's get started. So I think we have now more than a dozen on, so that's good, plus the other seven who couldn't make it, so that gets a nice uh, view. By the way, <clears throat> you see here, the word of content and the newspaper. In my view, LinkedIn is the newspaper and we are the editor. So what I see on it is completely different from, for example, what Tom is seeing, who's also an expert on the topic of LinkedIn, which is completely different from that what Isaac is seeing in a different uh, geography. Everyone has it differently and that is something which is very interesting and nice. So, and we can manage. And it starts with content. So quick question to all of you, and I type it as well. At which time do you typically post your content on LinkedIn? If you're daily posting, what is the time about? If you're only on once per week, is it on a Tuesday morning or is it on a Wednesday afternoon in your local time zone? For me, mostly. Um, Work days in the morning, 7.30 to 8.30. Nayana Weekling, evening. That's interesting. You might serve a different audience than Tom, who, who wrote before 9 a.m. That's good because then you have the rest of your day. Eva wrote random. That's true. And <clears throat> so there's no really right and wrong. It really depends. Georgia, you write about 11 a.m. That's interesting because your audience, when it's more business related in the financial services, they might use LinkedIn, have it open during the day for their corporate work. So then you hit them quite nice, nicely, or even later when they are maybe after the dinner. So that's good. And coffee break, bingo, you got it. Yeah, it's interesting. Thank you for all of the responses. There's a couple of them, I like it. There's only two ways of seeing this as a, as, a, as a direction. You can either do it based on your schedule, 
but then it's all about yourself. Or you can do it about the schedule of your readers. That I think is a better approach. And um, there's no need to post every day. So I just see here uh, on bed, morning and evening on my special days of posting. So if you post on Monday and Thursday, of course, you try to pay attention at that time. When your audience is there at a certain time, but you can't do it at that time, you can also even schedule this. So let's on to this. In my view, there's one way how you can have a different consideration than before, and that depends on your target audience on one side, but also what you like to get out of this one. So I call it here, turn social listening into winning activities. So think about your audience when they are there and where they are actually. Let me take the funnel. So Tom, you know this of course quite well. If I take a top of the funnel from a marketing point of view, I put 1000 people in there and maybe then 13 turn up into the webinar. Was not exactly 1000, but maybe I sent it to uh, 100 or 200. Then you have some activities which are really focusing on getting people into whatever you're doing. And at the end, some of them you get out which works particularly well when your profile answers what you are doing, headline is in order, your summary is good, that those who then see your content go on the profile and realize that's a good professional. I'm keen to see what she is or he is doing. So that's of course is tricky to have to be a genuine person. So when this is in place and you post content so that people can see who you are after they discover content, then of course you need to have the right topics and ideas. You can have curated content that comes from somewhere else and you can have your own created one. Depends on the length and frequency of your audience. In the meantime, I see more and more, despite links and likes, longer pieces, but the attention span of people is lower. They can't sit five minutes on one article anymore. That's the time is over. Timing is critical so that you can potentially schedule. So I'm using Hootsuite, for example, to schedule for maybe five years or so, or even six. But that's a good way if you can't make it at the time. But if you just schedule, let's say at 7 a.m. in the morning, then we are also missing out that we cannot comment at the time when it hits the audience. So then it's basically posted for nothing, that makes no sense because we need to be ready to engage quickly. And that's an important topic. So, and we need to ensure that we write content that fits for the funnel. If you want to grab an audience that we don't have yet, it's a lot about top of the funnel awareness type of thing. If we have plenty of people who follow us already, I can address them in a different way towards the middle of the funnel. And then I would like to convert them I better talk to them directly. So we need to, of course, have return on investment targets and measure from a professional point of view. But the question is how to start writing a social media post. And please add some ideas if you want. So the tricky thing, and many have that, if you start creating something, you look at the blank screen, you do not really know. You can't see anything except something in white. And for many people, it's quite difficult. Some others are just typing and typing, but some don't have the structure that is needed. So I'm a fan of using templates and I have a couple of them in my head so that I know what, what is working so that I can easily create something similar. I can post, I can also take copy, um, post from others when I see that is successful, I can, read them in the search for a structure. And then I have also a Word file, could be Google Doc uh, for every year, uh, for every calendar year where I have my post in it. So I can go back to them. Or I can also, uh, basically I'm typing something in it while I'm, for example, sitting in a webinar like this or an event, I'm typing ideas in it. So then I have basically one file with everything. And then I can easily grab some kind of structure and get on. The third option in order to write it is to have more a systematic approach. And I'm keen. And let me ask a question in the chat. Anyone using 
äh, ChatGPT ähm, äh, for LinkedIn Content. We all know that there is so much of artificial intelligence out there. So there's a couple of systems. Those of you potentially in a in a corporate uh, uh, corporate work that might have advocacy tools like who should amplify everyone's social, so many different ones who basically give content ready to click on a button. That's one way of using a system. The other one is using ChatGPT or other forms of artificial intelligence. Uh, simply take this, ask, ask it something. I wouldn't call it him or her and then get something out of it and rewrite it. Um, a couple of you write this. Georgia, you do. Tom, yeah, brainstorming. Exactly. I think it's more brainstorming than anything else. And then you can put it into the in intended outcome into your post. So that's a good one. I've done here one. I asked ChatGPT earlier this year, what actually is social selling? And then it wrote me, it is about selling on social media. I didn't like it. Uh, but that at least is one point of view. But um, the good thing is it helps us against the blank screen that we have on the left-hand side as this example. So there's a couple of ways how we can start writing. But if you write just for the writing or because you like a comment, you are hitting the chance to convert. So you better write in a way that always have the conversion in mind. Always think about who you write it for. So that's an important topic. So Many gurus have their own kind of methodology. I call mine Trello, and that is funny because Trello also is a name of a software uh, which has been acquired by um, Australian company Atlassian maybe two years ago. And Trello are the famous boards from a project management point of view. Um, there was the old logo, while this is here from the online course that I created about LinkedIn. But I put here six things, how I put thoughts together that turn into posts. Trust building, results driven. That doesn't mean bragging. I mean, uh, in the sense of I achieved 113% uh, quarter performance. Nobody cares in that sense. Results means rather that I would like to showcase my customer that they achieved something for their clients. And I've been humbly happy to help them on it. That's for me more the result type of topic. I add enthusiasm for whatever I'm writing about, think about if you read what I'm writing over the last uh, nine months or so, all about the technology and working from home and so on. So that that I write about zero trust, all of these things with a certain enthusiasm for technology. I urge learning, not teaching, because I do not want to be the teacher who says this, what you have to follow, but I rather say, I'm a learner, I'm sharing what's working for me, you can consider if you like, it potentially might work for you as well. The fifth letter is lifestyle. And that doesn't mean Lamborghini, but rather to showcase what's all around, the beauty of life that we are in, uh, the great country we live in, the situation and the chance in supporting small business around me and all of this kind of what fits into the um, good side of lifestyle. And at the end opportunity, one out of six, providing value in all posts, post once per day, some post maybe five times, but the potential reach based on the algorithm apparently will be then um, discounted. So if I can only reach so much and I wrote post it a second time, then the second post itself will be less successful compared to if I had posted it the other day. I tried to pitch never, and it's a good idea to produce in batches. And some of you might also be good on this one. I think Tom and Con, um, as you are content wizard, you write already in advance and then you use it whenever it's ready. So this is how I put it also once in a uh, on a post here in already a year ago on LinkedIn, where I shared my formula as part of a Twitter screenshot. But the question when we when we want to write based on converting, we need to think broader than just our own universe. We need to think about how can it help others? And I found three areas where this is possible. One time, uh, one point is in the office. So those of us who have an office place, it's good 
to get the bus and find out what's going on. Those who don't have a regular office, actually like myself, but I'm hanging around in, in shared workspaces, it's good to talk to others, to find out what resonates, to get feedback from the audience. Then I'm also famous for writing in cafes for maybe the last 20 odd years. So that's an important topic as well. So this is here in my favorite Sydney cafe called Ampersand in Paddington. So I got so many ideas in simply sitting and writing there. Must have been one of my other books, a fairy tale that I wrote there. And the third one is you can even use a collaboration like this one, a one-on-one -on -one base to grab someone's thoughts and talk about. So one day I've done this uh, with Con, who joined us here for the call today. Uh, Con and I, after one of my webinars last year, we also had a discussion and that was quite good um, to figure out what resonates and to share some experience. So we write because we would like to convert later. It's a different mindset of, I write because I would like to share what I have to say, because it's not about us. It's about the audience. So this means we need to move from content to conversion. And if you have any question in between, please let me know. Just checking through. So then Eva, you wrote, you used ChatGPT to enter a text. Imagine you would have written your novel um, called Going Solo with 440 pages using ChatGPT. Would be faster, but would not be you anymore. So glad you have done, you created your own. So question again for you in the chat, how much time do you invest per day on, call it engaging on other people's posts on LinkedIn? For me, 20 to 30 minutes. How much time do you have? I think Tom, I see you also in the comments. Um, so you, you do this as well. Con every morning, every evening, yeah. It's, I think this is, Con, you mentioned this as morning and evening exercise. I mean, there are some of us who are driving to work maybe one hour, then you can't really do that. But if you have a chance to do it maybe in public transport like myself, or you take this as a dedicated time, like in good old days, when we would read an industry publication or newspaper on a regular basis as part of our work, then that works as well. Isaac as well, yeah, you're good on that one. So that's good. And morning. There's one thing what I learned, <clears throat> that I read on LinkedIn this year. Whatever you do and get accomplished until 10 a.m. in the morning gets you well through the day. So when I wrote my book, Connect and Act, Systematic Social Selling, I wrote portions of it in early mornings, 30 minutes. That got me a good feeling that I've achieved something of what I wanted. That got me then back into writing and commenting for someone else. And that all gets me into the area of in my regular work, that I came and start my regular day-to-day -day work already in a good mood. So that's very good. So thank you for this. So many of you are actually really going for 30 minutes. That's good. And that makes sense. So let me give an example how far you can get out of a comment. Quite a funny one. Uh, and of course, yes, I was just a comment. Uh, it's not always easy on commenting and post independent work schedule, particularly for those who are on shifts. I get that. Um, you could schedule a post, but you cannot schedule a reaction. Let me tell you a funny thing. One day, I attended a training in 2010, long time ago. It was about a book called Crossing the Chasm, about something which is called the technology adoption life cycle. I gave a training in that in, I think it was the same year or 2011 in France. But I learned it from a gentleman called Michael Eckert from the US. I told him that one day I would be interested to go to Australia. He endorsed me for something. I think I hit him on his birthday. And these endorsements for me are a way to say hello. Interesting way. Just to say hi. And automatically it would suggest a comment like, thank you for endorsing me. 
that means I get attention. So I got this. And then he said two days later, ah, oh, look, appreciate you and uh, I'm glad you appreciate the endorsement. I remember you, congrats to your relocation. Mm, wasn't really relocated, but I came for two months of a, of a leadership training. And then we, we rambled on. I talked about something, said, yeah, yeah, I need it even, even a visa and everything, whatever. And then he said, good, networking can help. Let me introduce you to Peter. Well, then two months later, I came back to Sydney. I met Peter. And from there, my whole network started. It started with comments. And I learned that. So that there are many people who I met in Sydney, I would not necessarily go and say, hey, Bassam, do you have a job for me? But I started learning in strategic network and commenting. And that helped quite a lot. And I had the big pleasure at my book launch in May. I had three gentlemen who came on the first week I've been in Sydney in May 2016. And they all three came to the book launch. Not that they knew each other, but it was awesome to have them there. The power of commenting. So, so when we publish something and we would like to engage, then we need to work towards the desired outcome, whatever that is. Doesn't mean to sell, but we want to advance our business agenda. So that's the target. So in my view, the way how to work, creating a calendar, be sure when we post something, write maybe half of them in batches. Other posts we can do ad hoc. For example, yesterday was the American Father's Day. Well, knowing my father was uh, has been living in Germany, they have it in May, in Australia we have in September, but yesterday was the international one with the US, Canada. So, okay, in the morning, I thought, let's write about my father. And I simply wrote it within 10 minutes. That was one of these ad hoc examples. And you can even take comments from others and put it into a post as well. So then we post an audience is active, not then you write. So if I would publish at midnight, then nobody there is there to comment. And when my audience is back on LinkedIn, something more fresh is in their feed. Apparently the first 90 minutes of engagement counts. Some people say two hours, some people say one hour, but that's what I heard. So therefore it's important when you post something on what you think engagement will come, be ensured that you somehow hang around there. You can tag people in comments if you don't overdo that. And you can also send the post to others in direct message with a, with a bit of a hint that I could say, for example, um, uh, hey, Tom, have a look. This is this would work for your audience. Not in public tagging, but sending it in his messages. Assuming he's reading messages on LinkedIn, then it might be helpful. So there's certain ways how to make that happen. The only thing when it comes to commenting, many people are not good in that. And I'll show you some examples. So if you just write great posts, well done, you work, it doesn't help. And for those not, who do not know how to write their own post, commenting is a good way to get started. So here's one, one example. So then there was uh, someone, a gentleman called Tolga. He commented on something, then I commented. And we started a couple of times back and forth, and then we took it offline. That's good. Uh, another example, um, when I worked at Noggin, that is risk management software, I needed to fill a panel session at an event. It was a bigger event, 500 people invited, and I had the chance to give some people a stage, consultants. So how to do it? I wrote a post in that area about uh, implementing crisis management plans, highly specific. So then I got comments. Look, you can count the lines. Eight lines from Kerry McGoldrick, highly regarded professional, he doesn't have that big following in numbers, but the density is high of the people that he's connected with, only relevant people. And we kept on, and then another one came, Matthew Harper, and he added his views inside the same post, and then Craig Armour did. So at the end, Kerry attended the conference, Matthew has been sitting at the panel session, Craig has been on the panel session as well, and another one. It started with commenting. So if you find someone, who resonates with your 
content that might not be your customer, maybe never, but they might have good opinions about it. It's good to have someone like that sitting in the audience, ready to post and to comment. So then it looks like highly, um, highly regarded. So this, of course, is a more specialized focus for risk management. Take it broader. So the tricky thing is, if you really want to comment without a hidden agenda. So if I would comment only in a sense of, I might be the customer and I make the decisions of not buying, so therefore not commenting, it's not necessarily good. I learned a lot about Asian cultures, how they like to have also shown the dignity and respect towards the other person. And it's good to see that some people are actually good in learning and adopting this. So the, one of the examples from those here on the call um, is uh, Bell van den Hout, because Bell, you learned how to comment with one thing in mind, with empathy. You can think at the other person. You can think what's relevant to them. So therefore, your comments are insightful and not short. And you add another, another thought about it. You added maybe an example. And that's a good role case how it can look like. So that, uh, that's a great example. I even had cases when I joined GoTo back in September, where someone then said, oh, I'm already using this, or where can I find that? So they even represent leads and I can follow up and sell them. So there are, there are good ways of commenting. So when we have done this, um, then the question, what to do with all of that? And that is of course, one of the key things why we are here. So another sip, if you have any question, please feel free. Because now we know when and how to write good content. We understand the timing. We know how to comment and answer the comments. So that's good. But what are we doing with that? And the majority of people are just, they're just happy that somebody comments, lovely, and that's it. So getting into the next stage now is a topic. So question to all of you. How many comments on your post do you typically turn into one and one conversations per week, not per day? Imagine you post twice per week or three times per week. You get maybe average 10 comments on it. So how much of this do you convert? Convert into something. Good question, huh? In my case, I get maybe 10 conversations per week. How many times do you it, it goes well. Any number for the experts, Tom and Con, what would you write? It requires a couple of things for this. And uh, yeah, I bet you wrote two, uh, two to three. Yeah. It depends also for, for it depends also what type of conversation we have and what the typical agenda would be. So in my case, as I work in a corporate role, that's a different way of converting. And I also have my side business around, uh, around LinkedIn and my book, which is a different thing. So therefore I add it up together. So, but we need to find out who the people are. We can see who comments, obviously. We can connect with them. We can write to them. We can see who likes it. We can thank them in public and also in direct messaging. But we can even see who looks at our profile. And there's two reasons why people would look at our profile. Number one, they're looking for us. So that's good. If I would like to find out, uh, um, let's say, let me take Isaac for example. Um, I think you attended a training for me in 2021, or no, or 2020, I don't remember, end of 2020. Then of course, I think, oh, what's Isaac is doing actually? So then I would go and say, put your name on it, got it. But then there are others, which is coming from the content. For example, when there was a, 
uh, an event which I couldn't do um, recently, and uh, Georgia was the one who invited. But who's that actually? Who invites for this? Thank you for coming to the webinar. So then it came because you published an event and you followed up with it. You recognize I couldn't attend this time, but I would do next time. So it can always lead to something. And that is a good one. So, but where do we know who are all those people? So this is one, one example, I just grabbed it from, from today, about post impression profile use. Um, doesn't mean if these numbers are any good or bad, anything like this, don't necessarily compare. There are those who are main professionals in this area, like, like Tom, there are those who do very much on it, like Korn and Isaac, and some others when the following is not yet there. So then it doesn't mean the ratio would be the same. But what helped me on a regular base is this one. Post impressions, I see that, that are the views. The search appearances are not that relevant that I can do something with it too much. I can only figure out, oh, they all come from GoTo, from Hootsuite, even from HP, okay, nice. Uh, the total followers grows, uh, that at least is maybe one number, which is actually more than the uh, connections and surely I should be around the 10,000 soon. But the profile viewers, that is what counts. How can we find it? So all of us who have premium, they can see who viewed the profile in the, in the past 90 days. And you can see in my case, sometimes there are posts which are a bit of a um, spike. There was something in mid of April, something in around my book launch and there's something else when just got up again when Daniel Disney from the UK showed my book to his audience. So I got plenty of second grade connections who viewed my profile. It's worth analyzing. Without premium, we only see the last five. And of course, that's a um, bit of a missed chance. Unfortunately, the cost of premium went a little bit up. It's not 39 Australian dollars anymore, it's now 55. But still, in my view, worth it, at least to, to try it out for 30 days. So, um, let me show you an example where I've done an analytics about it and I could convert it. Once I posted uh, an article I found from a magazine called Electric about something in UK about electric vehicles. So it was a good content. The article was good. My best mate sent it to me. Instead of just sharing what many people do without anything, I thought I start with a hook. I added a provocative question. I summarized the key takeaways. I kept the post what I had brief as a lot of free lines instead of a big block. I tagged the original author who then connected with me, obviously. I used five hashtags and innovation is and is still the second most used hashtag. I just have the test I just said today with 38, 39 million followers, massive. And I've never used it before. So it got me a bit more. That's a good one. Yeah, nice photo. So I got, without bragging, but I got some nice views on it. But the interesting thing is I got 20 people who reshared that. They didn't reshare the article. They shared my post with the article. So I could connect with them. A couple from second grade or even third grade connections from company pages. But they never added something on it. So here you can see, if you add what I call a magic intro, the likelihood your post is visible is much higher compared to the other. But at least, apparently on this post, the highest I've ever had, I've done something right. I used Hootsuite to post it. It gets into away from LinkedIn because to an external article and still a lot of engagement. Good one. So what have I done and what are the activities to convert something? So, I commented in the first one and a half hours of posting. I had a good timing. I've done not just twice as corn as you mentioned, 30 minutes morning and afternoon. I also put uh, put a lunch break in between. I kept the conversation going. I answered those comments, added further thoughts to it. Um, I do not know the viewers, but I see who viewed my profile, which had a, a kind of a nice peak from there. I connected with those people which were suitable for my network. So I, basically I took all of those who liked it, how many were there, check uh, 574, hmm, 
I didn't take all of them, but I took many of them, to be honest, over time. I opened the profile on another tab and checked who of those might be suitable for my content, for my network. If so, I connected, but only with the personalized invite, which I created as a template, a sense of, hey, thanks for liking my post about. Would be nice to connect, or something like this. And then I tried to also to convert something in direct LinkedIn messaging. I use partially even voice and video. I talk about this and it helped me to share also some kind of um, similar content. Uh, I could add the hashtag on it. If I would do it today, I would maybe have a link to my book, something like this, which silently helps to do something about it, not to push directly. So these are the activities coming out of it. Did it take more than 30 minutes? For sure, it was maybe five hours. It was a good experience to have this massive um, results. But if you want to send a message to them, then of course it requires something. We need to be able to write good LinkedIn messages. And the difference in writing a LinkedIn message towards an email is that the LinkedIn message is a bit more like chat, like you would write in WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, of course, professional. Many people use messaging only for connecting. And you can see here one of the worst examples. They even say the typos in it, spelling mistakes, background at company with a placeholder and something like this. Of course, not like this. So you can use LinkedIn messaging not only for connections. And the good thing, if something is important, somebody wrote you something very good, you would like to reply, but you can't do it now. You can mark it, uh, put a star on this message, and then you can filter just by the start messages like in Gmail, and you can come back to this. That's a very important topic. You can even engage with people before you reach out. Do you want to go after someone and say, hey, can you please look at this? Or don't you better give value to a person? so that they come to you. One example, I wanted to reach out to a potential partner as a risk management consultant. They've done quite a good job in, um, in a lot of uh, material that I saw. So then I thought instead of sending a connection request, I took their content and shared with my audience. And working at that time at a risk management software provider, was good for, for, for the consultant as well. Really enjoyed that. So, and that way it, it really helped to uh, basically get the person coming to me instead of me reaching out, hey, can you please connect with me? So show them value beforehand, before they even know you. Let them get to know you through to your content and their help to them. And then it's basically a pull instead of a push. So then you can write brief and succinct and to the point with three lines, not a long piece. Have in mind that people might read LinkedIn messages on the mobile. So it won't be long, the lines are shorter. So therefore don't write something more than, than uh, three or four lines without having a blank, uh, I mean a blank line. And don't put too much in it. It's not a letter. And then uh, for example, even if you, create a person into, do even this short with a hook, as personalized as possible. And I always suggest grab the attention in the first sentence because they would always think, what's in it for me? Why should I respond to a message from person A who I don't know? Grab them properly. So not as weak as the person here on the left hand side. There was a question about the star messages. Yeah, so if you, if you are on, on LinkedIn, in the LinkedIn messaging, I just do it uh, without showing. Uh, and I go to a list of all of those um, who are there. For example, I take the one from Tom uh, in the morning so I can move it, I can swipe to the right. Then there are three dots called more. And I'm always curious when there are three dots, it means there's something. I click on this and there's written star. So now the conversation with Tom is star. So there's a lovely, of this star on it. So in case you might be able to see, 
not sure if the camera can show it, there is a star next to Tom's message. So and then at the top of the message in the bar, there is a chance to filter. Only, only filter messages to my connections or to start messages. I click on it and now I have Tom at the top. Very easy way and actually it's the same thing like, uh, like Gmail works, very good. Um, I can maybe do a screenshot in it and I send the slides over because I can't now switch to my own LinkedIn. But it's a good way to get the inbox, to get the messaging inbox sorted. And then of course, when we are in a conversation, add a call to action and then do a follow up. Call to action can be something like, uh, for example, Tom, when you presented in your BNI chapter last Friday and we've been chatting before, uh, then and you even wrote about it in a sense of if I would come, unfortunately I couldn't, but then you also then followed up. So that, that's the way how we can make that happen. Have one thing in mind, figure out if the person wants this and then simply ask. Nothing worse than saying no. But the good thing is you can stand out with your own personality. And that is a, that's an important topic. So how can we actually disrupt when we already try to convert? How can we disrupt that? So, um, and how can we add more value to it? So Georgia, when you and I, when we wrote uh, last week and you said, you asked if you, uh, if I would like to be invited for next event of your company. Uh, then I said, of course, yes. And you asked me for the email. So then finally you got, so you got what you wanted. You got, you built your list of people who next time can get in, invited to it. And that's the way how you build your audience when that is a target. So that's a good approach how to make that happen. Simply keep the dialogue ongoing. Simply like uh, when, when Con, when you start with 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon or evening, think it like you do your emails as well for preparing for the next day. Figure out if, if there's something open, write it on paper, figure out if there's something still what you would like to cover. Ensure that the message doesn't go anywhere because it's still not like like a good email client, you can still not filter that well, but ensure that nothing gets uh, gets uh, gets lost. So but that would be quite tricky. So the question here is also how can we uh, simulate working together? That for me is an important topic, and messaging can help us. So the big disruptor in messaging for me are voice calls and video calls. Question and I now phrase it. it was not on this slide, but I think we can do it. Question. Um, have you used video messages on LinkedIn? All right. Please answer in the chat if you are so kind. Uh, for me, maybe once a yeah, month, should be more often. I think, Con, you are quite good in this. I remember that. Georgia, you haven't, you could do. Isaac, you could, because I know you, you, can, you can go on video. You can do this, I will show you how that works. You can add voice and you can add video. It's simply different, it's a bit disrupting. It's like, oh, that is how the person looks like. Not that it's so important compared to how others look like, but it looks like you're a real person. And that's the main thing on it. Yeah, Con, you wrote effective with new connections. Yeah, because they haven't met you yet. So that, the only thing otherwise they know is a photo which can be years old. It only works well on the mobile app. So, and when you are on, on the mobile app, this is from iPhone, but uh, the uh, Android looks similar. You have these two uh, icons on it. Um, then you can, so with uh, the voice, you need to press the microphone button, hold it down for 60 seconds. I think that's quite similar to WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. And then when you open this uh, attachment sign, whatever that is called in English, um, then you have a video button. So you click it on, that starts a video. You speak something up to two minutes and uh, then you need to stop the video. It can be quite efficient if you don't overdo it. Um, and you can show your own personality. So that is a, that's a good, that's a good one. Uh, I, Good here, Bell, that you use the voice message. That's fine. 
Yeah, and Tom, try it. You will be surprised. Of course, one thing is clear. If you use video, you need to be someone who is used to speak in front of camera. Uh, if you use voice, just think it's like a phone call, nothing, nothing different. Uh, and yes, you can also integrate it with other platforms like you mentioned Vidyard, indeed, that's a good one. So I covered a range of things and topics and so much more that we can talk about, let me summarize. Because the webinars are typically only for one hour, I need to leave some question and answer time as well. So first we looked into content. For me, it's clear not just to write, but post it based on your sales funnel. Do you want to grab so many more people, put them at the top of the funnel? Or do you have a network that's always engaging, so if you want to get them further down the track that they make an action? And it's obviously you need to find ideas which are also outside of the box. In the mindset of converting, when you have done this, then you think about a conversation. What for me works well to be more prepared is to have a social media calendar where you know certain things you post on a certain day. Typically, I would write about social selling in my Social Selling Monday series where I sometimes uh, change the days or today I've done something else, but uh, I might come back to it tomorrow morning. I need to learn the art of commenting, which takes a while, but it helps. So uh, taking again the example from that, uh, when you started uh, on LinkedIn two and a half years ago, there were not many people who commented on your content. You improved what you shared, you improved the way how you wrote, but also it got much more visibility. And when then you had recently a post which got, I think, what was it, 11,000 uh, views? That's outstanding. That was really great because that shows also um, that it's possible when you come with just maybe only 1,000 plus followers that you can get 10 times your followers. That was really our 12,000 views about that was really, really good. So that's that's how to uh, how you can learn the art of commenting. And it brings you people from completely other areas into your content. And the key is maybe not think just at those. But if I would know that there is someone who is um, maybe not necessarily my customer, but someone who has a large network and resonates with what I'm writing. But the fact that they comment about it, it means their network sees it. And that's the key thing. Ensure that you have some people on there uh, that are often commenting on your content, which of course works if you pay the feature back, the, the, the favor back. So then that can help to bring many, many, many other people on it. And that's a good one. Um, is it a question of competition? Maybe, but maybe it's good because there's more than one hairdresser in the world. There's more than one life coaches in the world. And there's also more than one social selling experts in the world. And it could be that some people in the audience uh, that are hanging out with one provider who helps them a certain while, but it's not necessarily a client that it can turn that someone else they might resonate more with. So it can always go this way. Engage in the first 90 minutes is crucial. Uh, that is not lost. And I've done a couple of tests where on purpose I posted on the wrong time. And it was nothing compared to when I do it on the right time. And then of course, converting. So then in my view, it's about analyzing, figuring out where the people are, not wait too long, connect where suitable and communicate to stand out. And that includes as well in the way, the how to message. My way, how to message people um, is also to have some templates ready to say, well, for example, if someone uh, likes a certain post, remember the one that I shared from England with the electric vehicles, I created a, a typical response for those 500 who liked it. Not all, many of them, uh, those second grade people of them. So then I took, I opened all of their um, profiles over time, took me a bit, then I send them a message, a connection request, if it makes sense, otherwise just a LinkedIn message, um, for me easy as a premium member in a certain way, uh, or if I'm in the same group with them, where I would simply write something to them. Maybe similar, but the beauty of taking the template, 80% is there, you just copy, and take it further. 
and then you only tweak the name, maybe something else that stands out, and then you can get into a conversation. And this conversation can be can be really really good. So that for me is an um, it's an important uh, topic. So that you need to get started with getting out and send them a message, thanking them for their engagement or anything like this. It's also uh, written in in the book. It is an art of conversation, obviously, but if you do not write, it doesn't work. For everyone in the sales profession, we know that we need to reach out to potential customers. For us, it's more obvious. And for those in sales also, something like rejection is the norm. So we're used to the fact that somebody says, ah, oh, it's not for me, or that simply they are ghosting us. So that's normal. But the better we are in commenting and figuring out who is worth commenting with, the better it gets and the better responses we receive. So any, any further question on it, please ask. Otherwise, uh, with some five minutes to go, I would like to show you something. And that is like an, the webinar that I have, typically I then get into to introduce what I'm doing because my focus while working in the corporate space is more on small businesses. And I see many of them who are more overcautious, not doing anything, not really connecting well, who are overwhelmed by getting their feet and be bombarded with too full of something irrelevant. And then they're overthinking. And that also makes makes no real sense. So that is not necessarily a good thing. Um, so there's a way how they can overcome that. And that is simply by improving the activities on LinkedIn. That's why I also uh, created my book in the first place. So I have a couple of things uh, that uh, some might not be too much aware of. So on one side, uh, I have, for example, an online course that I created a while ago. And that is that actually gets into this particular topic, uh, the one that I raised uh, when it comes to um, uh, commenting and converting, a couple of things. Uh, I have some, I've done with some of you here on the call as well, to refresh the profile, to get back from a CV into storytelling uh, approach, and also some one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that is a part that I love to help some. So for example, take, take Phil, you will, uh, have the recording when you're on. It took maybe a couple of years so that you came on the idea to engage uh, with me, but that shows that um, when you work along the funnel, nurture the person and so on, and one day there might be a trigger out of a piece of content that then he said, Gunnar, now you can help me. That's exactly how that started. So the course works like this. It has four chapters. One is called the challenge about the whole thing. Um, the whole LinkedIn story, particularly for small businesses, how to connect well with people, how to get content out from commenting, creating creation point of view, and then how to convert. You can see I have a special passion for using the same first letter, four times C, under content three times C, under convert three times E. Somehow, my way of learning English. Uh, but that's what the course came and uh, created. And uh, this online course is actually quite affordable for only 99 Australian dollars. Um, and then the next thing, and that's the one that I would like to close with, is my book, which follows the same four topics. I only changed the first one from challenge, and I call it complete, because that's what we want to do. We want to have a complete LinkedIn experience and LinkedIn profile. So these four topics together made it into the book, and the beauty here, and very Humbly happy for it that the book made it also uh, to become the Amazon bestseller in two categories already. So that's very very good. It's available as um, as a PDF. Uh, sorry, as a it's a Kindle version, as a paperback, and there's even somewhere we'll have it somewhere um, a hardcover version as well. Very nice. And for everyone who has the book already, there's also. Um, a 20% discount for the online course. So then instead of 99, only $79. So that gets a little bit off and that's a good thing to have. So very happy for the book. Thanks for all of those also who came to the uh, book launch. So some of you here like Eva, all in, um, Belle, you attended. So that's a good one. Uh, Phil, you will watch the recording. 
uh, you as well, some others, Tom, I think you bought the book. Thank you for that. Keen to get your view about it. And for everyone else, if you need help, I'm, I'm happy to support your journey. Very well knowing I'm not a main job LinkedIn trainer and the opposite is rather I use it for my main role and I show what I learned. That's all what these webinars and all of the content is all about. So that's all what I wanted to share. If there's anything further, any question, please let me know. There's so much more to get deep into it. And um, I'm happy for everyone uh, who would like to get more in a very specific journey when it comes to uh, certain um, online coaching. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for joining. First time for being there. Thanks, okay. Gunnar. Take care. Speak to you soon. Oh, Tom. That's a good one. Mr. Wordsmith. So thank you, everyone else. If anything else, please let me know. You have my contact details over here. If you're not connected yet, yes, I don't remember, don't recognize all names, please let me know. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gunnar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Gunnar. Jing. So no further question, then I will close the call. Thank you.